I begin to hear voices. And that voice begin to sound so loud to my ear, to my heart, to all my personality and everything. The voice was speaking it so loud, so high. You see, what is the benefit of God for investing in your life? Thank you for this hour, O oh Lord. We give all the glory to Almighty God. By the grace of God, my name is Apostle Peter Daniel. You are watching me in heaven and hell, live program, where uh, by the grace of God, we listen to deep things, mysterious things that is happening in the realm of the spirit. I pray that every one of you that are listening to me, none of you will end up in hell in Jesus' name. Uh, please let's pray as we go into this powerful message that Jesus has for everyone this morning. Let's pray. Everlasting Father, the Spirit of the Living Father, we appreciate you because you are the Almighty. We thank you for always being our God. We thank you for always saving us from every difficulty. We thank you for proving yourself to us. We glorify and be exalted in the name of Jesus. Our Lord and our glory God, we ask you, Father, that you release your fire and power upon every soul here. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, as I was about to wake up, I was still in the dream, and let me say, in my sleep. All of a sudden, I was transmitted to a revelation where the Lord spoke to me and said, My son, this is a topic you should use and teach the, your, uh, to teach the people today. And when he said, this is the topic, what happened is that I begin to hear voices. And that voice begin to sound so loud to my ear, to my heart, to all my personality and everything. And what are the voices I was hearing? He said, what is the benefit of God for investing in your life? So he was sending it into my my skull here, my ear, and in my body. My body was into a serious, uh, I don't know how to say it, into a serious level. You know? The voice was speaking it so loud, so high. He said, what is the benefit of God for investing in your life? So at this thing begin to sound repeatedly into my ear until I wake up from that revelation. So when I wake up from the revelation, I ask God, as the Holy Spirit, God, what is the meaning of these revelations? And the Lord said to me that just as he has said to me in the revelation that this I be the topic I should talk about. And he said, what is the benefit of God for investing in your life? I said, benefit. I, in what we owe oh Lord? He now said, I invested in the life of Joseph. And Joseph, in return, saved the whole country. The whole world. He said, I said, okay. He said, I also invested in David and David ruled Israel. I invested in Samson and Samson he killed thousands of Philistines the enemy of the people of God. So I if you begin to get and get interested in these people I invested in Abraham 
and Abraham become a father of all nations because of his faithfulness. And God begin to mention them one after the other for me. And when he mentioned from the whole time, then he now jumped to the New Testament. He now said, I invested in the apostles. And the apostles in return, the labor for me, and also gave me in return their life. They will matter for myself. Ask them, what are they giving me in return? What I'm telling you, my look is just like a ordinary, in my look is as a message. It's not just a message. It's a divine message to you. It's a divine message to you. Probably you didn't understand. That is why I'm telling you now. It's a divine message to you. Investment. What is the investment you are giving to go as at now? With all the investment God has given to you. Now, the question you are asking God is that what is the investment God is giving to you? Number one, God has invested his salvation into your life. Then what is your own benefit? God, what is God's own benefit for you? Do you know that if God didn't give you money and he give you salvation, it's enough to go too far? Do you know that if investment of God, salvation, a law, is all what you have, you should be happy. But now, God invested in many areas. Invested in salvation financially in many areas and yet God was asking me this question brother and sisters if I should ask you how many souls do you want this year the year is running to end right now the year is running to end right now yes the year is running to end. And do you are you are even aware that there is an accountability? They usually account for every soul that is coming in into heaven. Your name like this will be placed in the presence of the of, of the elders in heaven. And they will look at your record for the year. And when they look at your record for the year, they are seeing one soul. Some of you, you have not even win any soul and you are happy. What is your investment? That is a question I'm asking you. If God is to look at your agenda, how many souls have you won and that soul is standing? How many souls for the whole 365 years, days, all 365 days of a year, how many souls? Answer me. How many souls? How many times have you go out and proclaim Jesus? Some of you, with all God's investment, God is even regretting for investing in your life. Some of you. God is even, invent, is even regretting that. Why, if I, why did I even invest in this person's life? Why? Some of you, God permit you to travel out of the country. And is regretting that. Why did you permit you in the first place? Because your heart has been stick to the worldly things, to the level and to the essence that you don't even want to leave the Babylon city anymore. To the essence that you do want to do away with the things of the Babylons. He's now regretting and is he, he's really in a big mess. Like God is really regretting that. Why have he allowed you 
to be in that country so as to make you to be in the best. Why? It's regret. Because it's investment for you is is as if it's nothing now. It's investment for you now. It's coming to a level whereby God is regretting to hide. I want to ask you as a sister and brother. I know some of you are supporting the work of God. But it's not enough. You yourself needed, you yourself needed to be ah, to do something for God. Your life need to be profited. God need to profit in your life. God needs to see you and is happy. Some of you have possessions, but none of them is of the Lord. Because all your possessions have been written in your name. And you begin sometimes you will just look around and begin to look at it and say, Oh Lord, how rich I am. And the work of God is suffering there. And the work of God is suffering there. And God is shedding tears over his work there. And you are there, you are saying, Oh Lord, my God. So now we have this whole building, now we have this whole houses, now we have this whole cars, now we have this kind of money. And the work of God is suffering there. You are forgetting that all these things you are doing, there is no benefit in it forever. The houses you have does not have benefit. The car you have does not have benefit. The property you have does not have benefit. The money you have does not have benefit. It can only begin to have benefit when you invest it into the kingdom of the living God. When you invest it in so winning, in so especially so winning, sir, I can tell you very well. If you look at the church, if you think that the church right now is okay, I can tell you that it's a lie. Church is not okay at all. The church is not okay. The house of God is not okay. Now you don't know. Now you don't know. Since church is not be okay. Christians are going to hell. Now you don't know. Do you know that it is is uh people who are dying every day is over 150 million in a day. I mean 15,000. 150,000 people are dying in every day. Go to Google and search it. Let me see it. Go there. In all world, 50,000. 150,000. Now, listen to me now. With that standard, how do you not think that God is benefiting? With 150 souls getting lost. Those people that we even think that they are born again, they are not born again. They are not saved. At least for God to invest in your life to the level that He didn't permit the enemy to kill you. He didn't permit the enemy to take off your life. The enemy are trying every day and night. That way alone is enough for you to pay God back by so many. For you to pay God back with every of your materials. It doesn't actually matter whether you are just putting money and throwing it outside. No. Do something to win souls with your materials. Do something to win soul with your body. Do something to win soul with your mouth. Do something to win soul with your mentality. Write right. Distribute right. Do something. Go out and now see it. And now Jesus in your working place. Disturb them with Jesus. In your working place. Disturb them with salvation. In your working place. Disturb them with heaven and hell. In everywhere you go, let them know that hell is real and heaven is real. Let them know that there is salvation somewhere. Let them know that the kind of Christianity they are living is a fake life. It will not profit anything. Let them know that being a pastor does not qualify anyone for heaven. Let them know that being a servant of the living God does not actually attribute the persons to be a real candidate of heaven. 
Let them know that the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violence taken by force. Let them know that with that holiness and righteousness, no man shall see the law. Let them know. Let them know. Let them know. Why are you quiet? Why are your neighbor dying in your presence and you are looking? What is wrong with him? When do you want to become a prophetic person to God? Stephen was saved by grace. Jesus saved Stephen by grace. And Jesus and Stephen paid back to God by surrendering his life for, his, for Jesus Christ. By preaching to God's poor until he was martyred. Look at the streets of everyone. Paul too. He did the same thing. All of them did the same thing. How many of them? How many are they? That didn't give God benefit. Are you not? Have you not read the Bible? Where the Bible talk about the master investing in three servants. He gave one five. He gave the other one two. And he gave the last one one. And the one of five invest so well. And he gave more five. The one of three invest so well. And he get more two. And the one of one. He didn't invest. He hide it. Hiding it means that you are keeping your tradition without profiting. I think it is that you are saying to you, you are giving the grace to you, but you didn't profit anything. You have to make sure that you are profitable. In everything, you are profitable. Somebody was asking me, say, Apostle, you know I pity you now. I said, well, why do you say that? He said, I pity you. I said, why do you say you pity me? Ah. He said, I pity you. I said, why? He said, I have been looking at the way you are living your life. I said, how am I living my life? He said, they will give you tithe. They will give you offerings. They will give you money. Instead of you to use the money and the offering to, for your family, for your life, you will rather be taking everything to God, investing it into the gospel, putting everything into the gospel, putting everything into the gospel. He said, I begin to look at what is exactly your benefit? I said, well, my benefit is in Christ Jesus. He making it to heaven. He said, I don't know why. All your life is just that, okay, people have to be saved. It's a bit of this. I said, I begin to pity you that with all your labor, with everything, and yet, instead of you to enjoy yourself, and in what way, with all your time, to buy a lot of things, you know, buy my things, you are using it for God. I said, I said, well, I would like to also live like you. I said, well, that is a good life if you live like that. And that is how you should be. Somebody else was asking, said, I wonder how you are getting anything. Because most of the time, it's a serious issue. It's a serious issue. I, I, I will see you having money now. Before you know, you use the money to help people out. You need it for the ghost. You need it for, ah, ah, ah. I said, well, you didn't understand yet. I pray it is not too late <laughs> before you understand. What am I trying to say? Is that invest in God. Invest in God. When you invest in God, you will reap in abundantly. You will reap in much. You will reap in much. When I'm talking about investing in God, I'm not actually referring to your money. I'm talking about you yourself. Though man, money is part of it, material things is part of it. But I'm talking to you, you yourself. What is your own personal investment? That is my question. I'm asking you. What is your own personal investment onto God? What do you invest to God? What do you give to God? That is the questions I am asking you. What do you give to God? I feel be able as you know that God does not eat bread. As you know that God does not eat food. As you know 
that if you give God water, he no go drink that. As you know, that if you do all these things, he won't take it. But one thing that God pleases is what? He wants us to serve him in all holiness. Number two, he also wants us to win souls because his souls, his heart is bleeding every day because of the lost souls. What is your own benefit? What do you do to the kingdom of God? What time do you think can God take us and say, okay, oh, sister, this and this. This is what you have done that has made heaven so happy. Brother, this and this. This is what you have done that has made God so happy. What have you done so far that can make God so greatly happy to say, okay, oh, we thank God. Okay, we okay. We are benefiting something from this. Itself. Now, let's look at Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19. Let's read what is there. Matthew chapter 6. Open your Bible. Open your Bible. Matthew chapter 6. Yes. Verses 19. Lay not up for yourself treasure upon earth. The problem we have in the Christian is that they read the Bible but they didn't believe the Bible. The problem we have in the Christian dom is that pastors read the Bible. But they what? They didn't, they didn't actually work accordingly. The Bible. They read the Bible, but they didn't work accordingly to the Bible. When the Bible says, Lay not, I was reading a book of Zechariah 4. It's an African man, but God has used him so mightily in a greater dimension. He's a doctorate. He became the best student in his time, best doctor in his time. But do you know what? With all the salary he was collecting, according to what he said, he distributed the salary into different parts. And it was any a, a short pay. Not only that, he disciplined his children to become a fasting master. His children would be going to three days marathon at a tender age of five years old. If you imagine a three five years old child going into three days marathon, he distributed discipline all people around him. To become a fasting man and a soul winner. And he take a dancing and say, Listen to me, O oh Lord. I want to win a soul for you. And this man won a lot of millions of souls for Christ. How did he do it? He invest too much into the kingdom of God. And he went home. If you begin to mention them one after the other, you will see that there's nothing else we are talking about than what? Our investment into the kingdom of God. He said, lay not up for yourself treasure upon the earth. Where moot and rust do corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. You see that? But lay up for yourself treasure in heaven. Where neither moot or root or rust do corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now do you see that? Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now what am I trying to say? Is that, do stop at, I know you are all trying very well. Talking about financially, you are giving to God. You are giving to your churches. You are trying your possible best. In making sure that things are made, we know. But you should also invest. In use your, I mean, use your hand work to also invest. In sense of you yourself, we so with your mouth. We so with your mouth. Do stop at uh, at uh, investing by uh, financially supporting. You to invest in your prayers, in serial intersectional prayer, intercessory prayers. Invest so much, and when you invest, you will see that you will not regret. I pray that God bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the message I have for you today. Invest God, invest into the kingdom of God by letting God benefit in you for investing in salvation in your life. By winning more souls, by winning more people to Christ. Do allow your mouth to be shut up. Do allow your souls to be shut up. Keep, keep fighting the good fight of faith by so winning and so other faith. I pray that you will not end up in hell.
in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and God be with you. Please share this message to everyone and let everyone learn from it and be safe. God bless you. Shalom.